Hello everyone. Today we will be extending on probability distribution and we're going to learn about discrete and continuous probability distribution. So first we need to know what discrete and continuous uh, data are. And these are basically two different kinds of data that we use in real life. So let me just differentiate the two here. So I'll put the discrete over on this side and continuous over on this side. And discrete data usually deals with counting things. So you can count the number of people, number of people in a room. You can count someone's age. You can count number of objects as well, like a television or a computer, etc. But a continuous uh, data deals with measuring things. So this involves things like height, you measure your height, weight, or volume, you measure how much water is in a cup. You can't really count uh, how much water is in a cup. So I guess another way of thinking about these is uh, discrete deals with how many. But continuous deals with how how much. Okay, so another way uh, of uh, distinguishing these two is that discrete data usually deals with whole numbers. And you can see that with the type of data we, we're dealing with here. When you say number of people, you, there's either one person or two people. You can't have 1.5 people. Right? It's usually just one or two or three. It's usually just a whole number. And the same thing is true for age or number of objects. It's usually concerned about uh, the whole numbers. You either have you either have an object, or you either have a person, or you don't uh, have that person. Whereas for the continuous data, it usually deals with fractions and decimals. Fractions and decimals, and for example, your height. Let's say that your height is. 175 centimeters, your height actually would be not exactly 175, but maybe 175.1 something or 174.9 something. And you usually round it to the whole number. So the accurate data for continuous uh, type of data are actually in fractions and decimals. And you can see the similar things when you're going from one number to another number. So let's say that uh, there was one person in a room and then one person entered the room. So now it became two people. Then when in the process of going from one person to two people, you can draw one person here and two people here. It just went from one to two. It didn't go from one and then to 1.1 and then to 1.2, then 1.3, it didn't gradually increase to two, it just went straight to one, or straight to two, right? It didn't take a process. There wasn't a process in between, it just went straight to two. And this is true for discrete data. It goes from one number to another number, or it jumps from one number to another number without um, an intermediate step there. But for continuous data, let's say that you were 160 centimeters and then you grew to be 100, 
um, 65 centimeters. Then when you grew from 160 centimeters to 170, uh, 165 centimeters, you didn't just jump from 160 all the way to 165, right? You grew to be 161 or 160 points something, and then 162, 163, 164 points something. And then eventually you'll reach 165. You don't just jump straight from 160 to 165. That's not how height or weight or even volume works. Right? So this is the difference between discrete and continuous data. Discrete data, it just goes from one to another or it just jumps from one number to another. But for continuous data, there's the intermediate step. So that's why it's called continuous. There are the intermediate step, it doesn't just jump from one number to another. It gradually reaches the other number. So I think an example that I can use to kind of visualize both of these at the same time is let's say you have a water bottle. There's a water bottle with the cap. And the number of water bottle, how many water bottles do you have? How many water bottles do you have? So in this case, I have three water bottles. This would be discrete. How many? There's one, two, three water bottles exactly. So this would be the discrete data, but how much water is inside each water bottle? Right? This would be continuous data because you are measuring how much water is inside. And let's say that you have, let's actually not fill one of these water bottles completely. Let's say that this water bottle is only half full. If you want to fill this completely, you can't just automatically go from half to whole right away. It doesn't jump from here to here. You have to gradually pour water so that it increases until it reaches the top. All right. So that's how continuous data works. For for discrete data, though, if you if you say you have three water bottles and you want to add another water bottle, you can just jump straight from three to four by just adding a water bottle. You don't need to go from three to 3.1, to 3.2, and eventually to four. And you can just add another water bottle and then now you have four water bottles. So this is the difference between discrete and continuous data. Now, uh, in conclusion, I want to show how each of these data uh, are visualized. So let's, I'm going to start with the discrete data. For discrete data, you usually use a histogram. So let's say that uh, we are collecting data about how many children are in a family. So number of children in a family. And let's say we've uh, researched 50 families. We've collected data from 50 families. And this would be the frequency here. So e either a family can have zero, no children, one child, two children, three children, or over four children. Over four children. And let's say that five of the families had no children. 15 families had one children or one child. Another 15 families had two children. And then 10 families had three children. How many is that? It's 45, so I'll have five here for over four children. And let's, I'll go and um, 
calculate the probabilities for each of these. So the case with zero children would be 10%, 5 out of 50, just dividing these by 50. That would be 30, 30, 20, and then 10 again. And if I draw this on a histogram, So on the horizontal axis, I'll have the number of children. Over 4. And then on the vertical axis, I'll have the probability. So I have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And for 0 children, it was 10%. So it was at point one right here one child was 30 two children again 30 now this is not uh, accurate to how it really is but uh, i'm just giving a rough data just to visualize uh, discrete data on a histogram 10 would be, or 3 children would be 20. And over 4 children would be 10. So if you look at the histogram here, usually uh, you can also write the probability for each of these on top of the bars. Just to make it easier to read data. But you'll see that towards the middle, Towards the middle here, the bars are higher, or in other words, the probability is higher. And that is because this is where the average is. Average means most people are going to be in this group. They're either going to have one, two, or three children. And the, these are the extremes. So having no children and having over four children are the rarer cases. So not as many people have no children or over four children compared to people having one, two, or three children. And this is, again, this is discrete data. So you'll see that uh, each of these bars are distinct. If you want to go from no children to one children, you can either have no children or one child. You can't have like 0 0.5 child in between, right? You're either in this bar or you're in this bar or you're in this bar, or in this bar, or in this bar, right? So each of these bars are distinct. Whereas if I were to do a continuous representation, continuous data, so let, this is going to be on height, the average height. The average height, let's say, is 175, and then 180, 185. 170 and then 165 so this is for average height of men the continuous data if you graph it it's going to look more like this so you can see that the datas are connected they're not distinct bars and you can actually go from 165 there's a a space in between here that you can go from 165 to 170 and on this side the prob this is the probability on the vertical line, on the vertical axis. And you, you'll see that the probability is the highest towards the middle as well. And again, this is because this is the average. This is where the average is. And the probability becomes lower as it goes to the extremes. So this is the case of 165 or less than 165, height of less than 165 and height of more than 185. Those are the more the rarer cases, but most people are going to be in between here. I'll be in between, right, in this space right here. And so this is the difference of uh, continuous and discrete data, and this you can see that graphically here. The continuous data, it uh, the data are connected. It rises gradually and then falls gradually but discrete data just goes from one bar to another.